do you know that 50% of property investors sell up within the first five years? And of those investors who stay in the property game, only 92% will only own two or one property. So the statistics have shown from the tax office really shows that most property investors, they will never ever achieve the financial freedom that they deserve. And today in this live cast, I'm here to review the one biggest fear that is holding property investors and also those who wish to purchase property, they hold them all back, this one fee. And before I review to you what this one fee is, is it alright by the way if I share with you a story of mine which will illustrate this fee which I once had. Hey Chris, hi Andrew, thanks for tuning in. So this story comes down about half a decade ago. So I wanted to become an investor myself. I wanted to purchase property because I know from the statistics on the, the rich list in Australia and around the world, the richest inv individuals are all earn their money from real estate. Real estate is the number one vehicle for building wealth, in my opinion, because of the, the compounding of, um, effect of leverage, which able to use other people's money to grow your wealth in an accelerated pace. And I knew back then, I have to do it. But what was keeping me back was, I remember my parents, I was brought up and my parents saved really, really hard, earning the little interest in the bank accounts and they never took on debt besides buying our family home. And they were saying to me when I was 20 years old, 19 years old, Matthew, you should never get into debt. Debt is bad for you. And those who are in debt, they'll get in trouble once they lose their job. So my parents were telling me to play safe, never take on debt because it's bad for you and just live life safe. Do not take the risk. So back then I remember saying to myself, yes, I should just, you know, just focus on my degree, graduate uni and get that job. Get the job in a very good company and just save for retirement. So I thought to myself, yes, this is the path to go because this is what my friends are doing, this is what my family friends are doing, this is what my parents told me. And so for the, for the first two or three years, after I've been told that, I just lived the life of a normal person, just not taking any risks and not really doing anything to secure my financial future. And so what I realized was in the first two or three years before I had mentors, I had this limiting belief, this internal blockage in my mind. Hey Lawrence, just talking about my story in regards to fear, of th this fear, which I'll be reviewing later on. Um, this is what stops most property investors. Um, so I was blocked in my head to never take risks and just the first two or three years after that um, encounterment with my parents I was living an average life nothing was happening daily day I was the same and I was getting bored and dissatisfied and so this is when I reached out to the most successful property investors in Australia and asked them hey can be my mentor so I paid them lots of money to teach me on what it takes to become a successful investor why does 92 percent of investors don't get one or two properties you can never achieve financial freedom from just one or two properties it does not work so that got me curious as to what does the rich do differently than an average person why does the rich keep getting richer why does the average middle class stay average and so this is what i go through with my mentees on how to clear those internal blockages and after i realized this this tip i'm about to leave you it, will, it may challenge your beliefs. It may challenge what your parents have told you. And remember, we are habitual creatures. We've been conditioned by our upbringing. We've been conditioned by our upbringing to think that life should be played a certain way. And this is normally done by parents, teachers, and maybe to a lesser extent, your, your university lecturer. And this thing that most people are scared of is debt. The fear of debt, that has held me back for years investing into property because my parents, they were so scared of debt. They don't want to get into debt for anything. And if you look at the richest people in the world, 
let's pick Donald Trump for example. He's he's very wealthy. He's gone bankrupt and he's gone back to be very rich again now as a president. And uh, he, one of his quotes is, "I am the king of debt." He knows how to leverage using debt to build assets to control more money, so that they can, so that he can build a larger asset base at a more accelerated pace. And the rich is really good at controlling money, controlling debt. The average person in this world, they let money control them, not controlling money. And I guess one of the one tip that I think leave you guys is to distinguish between good and bad debt, because this is what a lot of people, the average person, gets wrong. So they think all debt is good because, sorry, bad because it's what their parents told them or it's what they read somewhere online. Well, let's distinguish between bad and good debt, and hopefully after this this explanation, you'll figure out why the rich keep getting richer and what you can do to really bring in the results that you deserve. You don't live one life, guys. Why should you play it safe? In your last day of your life, you don't want to go and say to yourself and everyone around you, "Oh, thank God, I play it safe." Would that? Would you want that? Let me ask you that. I want you to consider whether you are currently playing your life every day to its fullest, because this is what life is about. It's living life to its fullest every single day. Do not hold back on your dreams. That's my firm belief. And I reckon everyone in this world has potential to succeed, given you got the right guidance and mindset. So, anyways, back to the debt. It's good and bad debt. Bad debt is used for depreciating assets. For example, very common car loans. We are geared towards immediate gratification, and this day and age, it's very easy to get a credit card, a car loan, just to buy these toys to bring you immediate gratification. I see so many people that get sucked into car loans so that they can get that Audi or Mercedes or whatever they want, this racing car, just to fulfill that need for immediate gratifications. Remember what I talked about immediate gratification. Most humans, we are geared towards pleasure and avoiding pain. So we hate to save up years for the house. We we hate to save up months or years for that car. We want it now, and this is what causes people. Fail financially because they give in to immediate gratification. They now cannot control their urge, and the problem is we are conditioned by society of what everyone else is doing. We like to belong as humans. We have, we really like to have that sense of belonging. If, for example, your friends they're all tuning in and going, "Hey, look, I got this car last weekend," you are more likely to get that car, and hence get into bad debt. Another example is credit card debt. People are funding their holidays on credit card debt and paying 20% interest. This guy is what I call immediate gratification and letting money control you. A study by Tim Corley from the United States, he said that the rich, they do not give in to immediate gratification. They have discipline, self-discipline. And this is what distinguishes from those who control money and those who are controlled by money. And this is. Really big. So, guys, if you have some bad debt, or if you're looking to get into bad debt just to seek short-term pleasure, let me ask you: Would you want to prefer uh, forego your financial future? Would you want to com uh, compromise the financial future just for a few months of pleasure? So that's a bit of a paradigm shift. You have to think long term. The rich and successful, they think about the long-term consequences of the action. What's good debt? So good debt, guys, is determined by what you're using debt for. So good debt, in my opinion, is debt used for appreciating assets. So assets that go up in value. For example, you take up a mortgage to buy your home or buy an investment property. Long term, wise, the property will go up in value. So the debt is normally tax deductible. What does that mean? It means that the ATO will give you a tax deduction so that you can get, you can pay for the expenses, interest, maintenance of the house, whatever, using your pre-tax money. Most people they fund their lifestyle through post-tax money, so after-tax money. Which, this is how the average person does it. They get their paycheck, the government takes their share, 
and then spend what's left over. But the rich, they use pre-tax money to pay for stuff. For example, uh, they pay their interest on their loan with pre-tax money. They pay for their rent, for example, if they're running a business using pre-tax money. So the rich, they're normally business owners, investors. And this is how they always get richer because they, they are very financially fluid. They understand how the tax system works. They understand how um, the mortgages work. They understand everything. And to be successful in property, guys, you've got to be financially fluid. And a lot of people, they do not understand the difference between good and bad debt. And this is why they're scared to take on debt to make their first purchase or to make subsequent property purchases. And after I have realized this, you know, I got a paradigm shift in my mindset in regards to money, how I view money. Most people in this world, we in, in our generation, the millennials, we have been raised by baby boomers or it's Generation X. And their mindset in regards to money is, go buy the house guys, kids, and pay it off ASAP. That is bad for you. And unfortunately, I know a lot of people that they've been wanting to invest in property, but they're held back by the fear of debt. And they've wasted years of potential gains and compounding and rental income because of that debt. And guys, that is a lot of time. The only thing that's limited in this world is our time. We cannot get back time. It's very precious. And if, you're, if your fear of debt or fear of something, taking risks, is holding you back from years of hard work or years of you know, compounding in regards to poverty or shares you want to buy, that's a lot of money you're wasting. So a lot of people, they think, Matthew, why invest so much in a coach or a mentor? And, they, and then I said, isn't it expensive? And then I said in response, expensive compared to what? If I had not invested years back, I would have not bought anything. My net worth, my wealth will be still the same. I'll be broke as. So compared to what? So the rich guys, they leverage not just money, using other people's money to buy assets that go up in value. They leverage time. I've taken a shortcut. I've leveraged my mentor, where the property for 40 years. So for 40 years, for a few thousand bucks, I say 40 years, guys, of my time for a few thousand bucks, would you do that? And that now my results are showing that it's worth it. Just make that first investment. It's how the rich thinks about money. It's all thinking about is the return on investment, not the costs. It's an investment in yourself, not to other people. I'm sorry, not to, um, it's not a cost, it's an investment. And the average person, they think it's too expensive, but I always ask them back, expensive compared to what? That's the question I like to leave you with. So this is why fee of debt holds people back because they do not invest in their financial education. And the average person will continue to hate debt, continue to feed debt, so that they cannot never get started on property investment. They procrastinate. And how much time they've wasted just on procrastination. They don't have the clarity. They don't have all of this necessary the mindset and the skills and knowledge to get started. And they procrastinate for years. I've known so many people like that. They want to get started, but they never do. And it saddens me. This is why I hope this message impacts you guys to to get, take action and not procrastinate because time is the biggest wastage, like the biggest asset that they shouldn't waste at all. Time is very finite. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. So hopefully you can utilize this content so that you can make better decisions in regards to your financial future. Thank you for tuning in. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or share this video to those who will benefit from the material I'm sharing with you. Have a good day everyone, I'll see you on the next class.